before working with Greg, I'd go out there for a week and feel just dead tired. I can now go out for four, five, six weeks and be okay. You have these weaknesses if you keep putting forces on the body, and the body shouts out in pain saying, quit doing this until you fix the problem. So pain is basically, I always say it's our check engine light. It's basically saying something's wrong, you need to fix the problem. For the most part, I can play without any aches and pains. Or as I get older and progress in, in life, I want to be able to play like a Bernhard Longer. So he helps me stay neurologically in the right place. We keep learning about how to be better each and every time so my pain tolerance level gets higher, you know, so I don't have that much pain. If you don't basically melt the ice, if you don't take away the instability issue, then the body's gonna to continue to tighten up. And that's why many people stretch and massage and get different modalities to loosen up tissues and they never get any more flexible is because the body's saying, I'm still on ice, I'm still unstable. So our goal with MAT is to melt the ice. There are many reasons why golfers like you spend time in the gym. Some try to get stronger, some try to look better, and some try to gain an edge. That's what Bresson DeChambeau is doing. After being unsatisfied with never cracking the top 20 on tour in driving distance, Bryce has set out to gain speed and explosiveness this offseason. Holy shimoli. Absolutely. Crushed it. 375 yards down the third. It's open new boundaries that I've never thought were possible. I don't know necessarily how to control all of it yet, and I'm trying to experiment and see what the future holds for me on that. I want to see what I can do. 17 pounds of muscle later, Bryson's driving distance has increased significantly, and he credits his time in Denver, Colorado, with trainer Greg Roscoff for making the difference. Greg trains in phases, focusing on maintaining, preventing, and fixing. We want to be strong and stable from the hips to the thorax. We prepare the body to tolerate the forces that come with exercise. Bryson has always told me how unique Greg's work is. So we travel to the Rocky Mountains to see how Bryson and Greg prevent injury and expedite recovery time in between events. Life is going to break you down. You say it all the time. Life's going to break you down. You need somebody to repair you, and I come back to you for help. One of the biggest things I have struggled with in the past has been right back. This this backside, you know, rotation, a little extension. It's just from hitting a lot of golf balls. Obviously, in the golf swing, you right rotation, and you know, you go into side bend, and as you hit through, you're going to extend yes. the, the body. Fundamental of golf swing, you have to do those motions. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And so I use that a lot. I hit a lot of golf balls. For me, that's just something that's going to occur. That pain that you're feeling. You're saying yeah. it's, it's more from a, a shutdown of things? More of an overuse. Okay. Whenever you have stress, trauma, or overuse, the resultant inflammation alters the communication between the nervous system and the muscle system. The muscles can't fire as efficiently as they're designed to fire, so they can't do their job to stabilize joints and protect you from injury. So the natural response to that is the body tightens up. Kind of like when you walk on ice, the body tightens up as a protective mechanism. The natural neurological response is when the body senses instability, it goes into this protective state. So when you have altered communication between the nervous system and the muscle system, that's an instability issue. The muscles aren't just firing the way they're designed to fire. So it's an instability issue, so the body goes into that protective mode. And so tightness is actually a symptom. It's actually a sign that there's an instability. And many times with modalities, we focus on trying to take away the tightness, provide a sense of stability, and the body will give you all the mobility in the world. When muscles lose the ability to contract efficiently, they lose the ability to shorten. So think of the muscles that side bend the spine. If those muscles got overstressed or overused, they would lose the ability to fully contract into their shortened range. The opposite muscles will tighten up to protect you from moving into that shortened range. So now all of a sudden he tries to go in that position and he can't go into that. So then he has to compensate and deviate into another plane or another position. 
I just had Bryson hit some balls just to put the stress on his body. When I go through an assessment, I'm actually using limitations and range of motion as my indicator that something's wrong. So if you're limited, then you know something's shut down and therefore something else is tight. Exactly, which is a paradigm shift in thought process because most of the time we think, oh, when you're limited in motion, that means we need to stretch these muscles because they're tight. If I took him into hip flexion and I'm checking his internal rotation, one of the common imbalances that I see with athletes and I mean, people that perform in a high level is they have a huge limitation in range of motion and hip internal rotation. As I check him here, there's a subtle difference between his internal rotation on his left leg, soft cushiony end feel on the left, bring him up in the right. And there's a little bit of a limitation, a little bit tighter, a little harder end feel on that right side. When you make a backswing, you're rotating your spine, but you're also going to some internal rotation. So my back is maybe being potentially overused for limitations in the hip rotation that help make increase rotation. That gets, yeah. So it's Correct. overused, it gets tight, now Correct. the whole thing is tight Correct. and restricted. Yes. Yeah. So now all of a sudden he's got more rotational forces going through his spine, so then all of a sudden his back's tightening up. We focus on, on the pain, and it's like, oh, my back hurts, so all, all the focus is on the back. We're looking at this integrated system that basically the foot, the ankle, the knee, the hip, the, all the way to the occiput are interrelated. And wherever you have instability or weaknesses, you're going to have correlating tightness. That correlating tightness causes you to have to compensate and pick up those motions in another joint or tissue, which the pain could show up far away from where the dysfunction is. He was a little limited on his internal rotation on his right side. That's telling me that one or more of the muscles that cross the axis that relate to internal rotation are potentially weak. Neuromuscular strength, can you resist a force in that extreme range of motion? Find the weakness in one of the muscles that move you into that position. If he's limited in internal rotation, we could have him do isometric contractions to try and reset that communication between the nervous system and the muscle system. We call it part of our jumpstart program where it's actually we do isometric contractions to contract the muscles further into the shortened range. And then I would have him push into my hand and he's firing the internal rotators in the hip and relax. So we have him do six contractions, six second holds. It's the slow twitch muscle fibers that are actually inhibited. They're the ones that stabilize our joints and maintain upright posture. So those are the ones that get inhibited when we have inflammation. So this isn't about how strong are you. It's can you contract in that short range? So I'm gonna bring him into the short range and just lightly, with 10% intensity, lightly push out for six second holds, and then relax. And then I take him back into that position, and then a six second hold, and see how that yes. So the range of motion is already improved in his hip relative to internal rotation. Not because we stretched him, but because we actually created the connection between the nervous system and the muscle system to be able to contract those muscles further into their shortened range. One of the things, that has been super helpful to me has been doing isometrics and trunk rotation. So, you know, like one of them would be this, right? Go here and then up, turn left. This is one of the isometrics. So an isometric for a trunk rotation, he would push further into left rotation lightly to get these left rotators to contract. And then he relaxes, comes back into the position and then pushes in lightly. And so you think of how important spinal rotation is for golf. So many people, I'll check the range of motion and they can't turn one way, but they can turn excessively to the other. I mean, when you have to take a backswing and then generate a lot of torque to hit the ball for, you have to have equal motion on both sides. So in this process, we're always looking for symmetrical motion. Wherever you see asymmetries, it's telling you the direction you can't move into are the muscles that can't contract effectively. <laughs> Next on Swing Expedition. We're teaching the muscles to move the bones with a component of strength. And you can see that I'm going into the full end range of motion. 